Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84 and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at some interesting Apple CDs, particularly this Apple Power Macintosh Radio Scripts and Ad Slicks disc. Yeah, this is a strange one. Could not find any information about this online. Uh, this is promoting the 7200, 7500, 8500, and 9500 series of Power Macintosh computers. And the disc is sealed. I got this on eBay a while back. I think it was about $50. Usually I don't spend anywhere near that much money for things like this, but I was so intrigued and could not find out anything more about this online. So I figured, okay, might as well try and figure out what's on this thing. And so I set up this machine here. This is a Power Macintosh 8600, a little bit newer than some of these machines. I'm very curious to see what's on this disc. So I figured I might as well show you folks as well. So first things first, we have to open this. So we'll do that. Um, apologies if there's some noise from the fan on this thing and the furnace and everything. It's just how it is, but it's one of those uh, shrink-wrapped plasticky deals here. Not the satisfying to peel off kind, the you know cheap repackaged feel type, but I have no indication that this was ever opened. And there we go, we have the disc. And hopefully it's not damaged or cracked or anything like that. Yeah, looks beautiful. All right, so let's put this in our CD-ROM drive and reposition the camera and see what's on it. Okay, this just opened up as a disk called Resource. Uh, there's a few files on here. Looks to be some ads, some radio scripts, some fonts, uh, and a README first. I guess we should do that. The materials on this CD-ROM were developed to help you advertise and sell Apple Computer's new line of Power Macintosh computers. All right, so we have some ad slicks, which I assume are, oh, <laughs> they're Atlas PageMaker files. You will need Atlas PageMaker release version five or later. The four radio scripts are basic text files. You can open them using either Simple Text or any other text editor program. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't have PageMaker on here yet, um, but we can look at these radio scripts, I guess. Interesting. Let's see how big this is. <laughs> Only 11 megabytes. Okay, so that's quite a, quite a small little CD. I thought this might have uh, video ads on it, but it looks like there are print ads and radio scripts, which I guess is okay. Let's open up one of these radio scripts and see how in-depth they are. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try and reproduce one of these. Stop. You don't have to shell out loads of money for a new high-performance business computer because right now you can get a state-of-the-art Apple Power Macintosh 7200 computer at an affordable price. This incredibly powerful system features a blazingly fast PowerPC 601 <laughs> risk processor. Yeah, okay, buddy. That zooms through all your business applications. You also get built-in networking, PCI expansion slots, a built-in quad-speed CD-ROM drive, and a hefty hard drive. Hefty in more way than one. Get the computer that makes power affordable. Stop by dealer name today and see the new Power Macintosh 7200, the professional Macintosh. <laughs> I wonder if any of these differ or if they're all just like the same thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this one talks about PCI expansion slots. Uh, this talks about 604, 3 PCI, upgradable processor, and the 9500. Got a bit more here. Let's, let's take a stamp at this one. Attention power computer users. Stop waiting for huge files to open, screens to refresh, or 3D images to render. Because with the new Apple Power Macintosh 9500 computer, you can get workstation performance for your high-end computing tasks. Ideal for pre-press production, multimedia, and data analysis, the Power Macintosh 9500 features today's fastest PowerPC 604 RISC processor, six PCI expansion slots, and plug-and-play designed for upgrading to faster processors as your needs grow. Stop by dealer name and see the best in power computing, the new Power Macintosh 9500, the professional Macintosh. <laughs> oh boy, so we do got some built-in fonts here. And I guess the Apple Garamond font. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So I guess I need PageMaker version five or later. 
There we go. <laughs> what game is this? Okay. Okay, so here's the standalone page maker application. It looks like there's a few different downloads. All right, so the first one should work for us. And we just have to wait seven hours. Oh, thank goodness. Only 30 minutes. All right, so we got the download here. Let's quit out of Internet Explorer to free up some memory. <laughs> if it didn't freeze. Really? There we go. All right, so we have to unstuff this. <laughs> and it doesn't recognize it. Oh, goodness. Are you serious? <laughs> okay, it worked that way. Sure, why not? Okay, we have a bunch of updates. What is this image one update? Why would there be? Oh boy. Yeah, something is telling me I want to do a reinstall on this system. But anywho, let's just mount all of these. I don't think I need this updater one. I guess I'll leave that alone. Install everything? Sh sure. Select the printer description files. Oh, you know me. I'm just a simple man. I like my image writers, which is not gonna be on here for Obvious reasons. Uh, uh, let's go with the uh, Laser Writer 2. Why the heck not? Oh. I should have wrote down the serial number. Alrighty. Alright. I think it's installed so we can get rid of all this stuff. What were we doing again? <laughs> That's right, we were trying to see what was on this CD. Okay, so let's open this up, make sure the application actually opens. Excellent, all right, let's open up one of those documents on the CD. Let's go first with the 7200. Yeah, but I, I have those. Um, well, all right, let me install the fonts first. I think <laughs> I'm not following the readme instructions. Well, it actually doesn't tell me to install the fonts, but I guess I should. I don't know what I'm doing. I just play the guy that knows what he's doing on the TV. All right, let's try that again. Well, <laughs> sure, why not? Oh, look at that. You don't have to be rich to be powerful. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Customization area. All right, let's see, how do we zoom in here? I will not pretend to have ever used this program. <laughs> All right. That is cool. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing with this program, so forgive me. Everyone's going to be yelling at the screen. I've never used this before, or at least not that I can remember. Um, let's try and zoom in somehow. Um, there we go. Uh, actual size. Okay, so we can read some of the text here. So that's pretty cool. 
Uh, looks like this graphic is, uh, well, I guess it's supposed to be like that for print and such. Although it looks, oh, there's, uh, there's something under it. Why can't I interact with this? Is there like uh, some sort of thing preventing me from doing so? Because when you scroll, you can see it says Power Macintosh, but uh, there's also the option to put this screenshot over it, which is neat. Um, clearly have some fonts that are not either being drawn or are not being selected properly. But yeah, that's pretty neat. So you have a customization area here. So if you were a business, you could put your phone number or your address there. We have some specs here of the Power Mac 7200, 75 megahertz model and the 90 megahertz model. So that's neat. Let's open up another one. I'm assuming these are gonna be very, very similar. I guess we'll just have to go with those for now. But, oh, this, this is different. Oh, that's cool. Oh, this is excellent. Built to make obsolescence obsolete. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, Apple. Although the 7500 was a pretty darn solid machine. It was a 601, so that was the first generation of PowerPC Macintosh computers, but it actually had some expandability to it. Not as much as the 8500, but still kicked the crap out of the 6100. Upgrade to tomorrow's technology easily. Yeah, this had an upgradable processor, unlike the 7200. All right, let's uh, open up another one. Introducing Apple's most powerful multimedia machine ever. <laughs> this blocky font is just funny. Yeah, I'm going to guess that's the font it doesn't want to load right now. Or is there some sort of option to... Oh, geez. Display master items. Show index. There's graphics. High resolution. That's what we want. That's high resolution. <laughs> okay. Oh, goodness. I mean, there's, there's settings and stuff that I'm sure could make this a better experience, but I'm just too dumb to know about it. Now with PowerPC 604 processor. Okay, let's open up the last one. And that is the 9500. Put one in front of you, put everyone else behind you. <laughs> oh, that's great. These are pretty cool ads. I've never seen these before. So at least, at least I got that going for me with this $50 eBay purchase. And I'll be archiving this disc so you could download these on your own and probably figure out how to use this software much better than I am because yeah, I've just never used it before. But these are really neat. Well, that was pretty neat. I hope you enjoyed looking at one of these discs. It's not every day I pick one of those up. A lot of them have already been archived, but some of them have not, or the copies of them that are on Macintosh Garden or archive.org may not be ripped correctly or copied correctly, so they don't open or they're corrupt or something like that. So if you do see one of these discs cheap or you have it in your collection, don't assume that the one that's already uploaded or available works. There also might be different versions. And like all of this stuff, it does none of us good just sitting on a shelf collecting dust. The reason I upload these to Macintosh Garden and archive.org is to share them. I mean, this stuff is ancient. Um, there's very cool things that you could just find and play around with. This is a QuickTime test kit. This is an Apple CD-ROM Explorer disc. And this stuff is just really neat to a lot of people like us who like tinkering around with these things. So look in your collections of floppies and CDs. And if you have something interesting, please archive it and make sure that you could share it with others because that's a really cool thing to do. I'll put some links in the video description of how to properly do that stuff, but your help in preserving Macintosh history is greatly appreciated. 
So there you have it, a look at the Apple Power Macintosh radio scripts and Ad Slick CD-ROM. That's really cool, I wonder if there are more of these things, probably. Um, I hope others archive them just like I do because these things are very interesting to me and other people who love these vintage computers. I wouldn't say they're necessarily valuable because, I mean, how much value can you put on 11 megabytes of text <laughs> page maker documents? But it is neat. So, you know, I'm glad I did pick this up. It will be archived, obviously, so others can take a look at it. A link will be in the video description of where you could find the image to this disc. But yeah, I thought that was fun. So I'm glad I shared it with you. Let me know if you can get the view and fonts better looking on your Macintosh. I'd be very interested to know. I know I'm doing it wrong, so don't tell me that. But yeah, play around with this and see if that makes you happy. Because <laughs> looking at this old stuff certainly makes me happy. I'm very nostalgic for Apple machines, obviously. And stuff like this just puts a smile on my face. And if you enjoy tinkering around with these types of machines, feel free to subscribe to the channel and like the video and do all those fun things. But that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you right here next time on Mac 84.